All right, Terrence Pop here with another episode from the lair. Okay, we're going to continue on uh, with some uh, CQ stories that took uh, place while I was at second bat. Now, CQ stands for charge quarters. If you haven't watched some of the other videos, uh, basically when the commander and first sergeant leave the company area at the end of the day to go home, the CQ is uh, the guy in charge of quarters. Uh, he has a CQ and a CQ runner. Uh, CQ is usually an E5, and the runner is E4, down to, you know, Joe Snuffy, Joe Shitbag, you know, new guy. Okay, now the CQ has a logbook. He has the phone numbers to the first sergeant and the commander. And he has the keys to every locked room inside the company area, except the arms room. So uh, if you need to get into a door, you got the key ring, boom, there you go. All right. Now, at second bat, you came up on a DA6, which supposedly randomly selects you for CQ. Do I think it was random? Yeah, yes and no, you know. I mean, I've been a first sergeant, I don't know how that shit works, so. For the most part, it was run, you know, like it was everywhere else in the army. It wasn't really too fucking corrupt or fucked up, but there was definitely some hanky-panky going on. But, you know, looking back on it now, it's really not a big deal. Now, I don't know if this process still goes on at BCO 275, but uh, when you had CQ, there was a old metal cup on top of the, of the desk right there at the main entrance, and it was painted blue, and written on the cup, it said drone fund. So basically, come five, six o'clock at night when everything slows down, everyone likes to drone out. And people, you know, would walk by and throw a couple, you know, bucks in the, inside the cup and you'd go down and get a Coke or a, or a Snickers or whatever and keep yourself awake. Uh, because the shift starts at nine in the morning and it ends nine the next morning. It's a 24 hour thing. Uh, if it was real slow, usually let your runner get some rack you know, so he could have the next day off and then really not have to sleep all day or whatever. I usually didn't really sleep too much. Um, I've never been one to oversleep or need sleep, you know, excessively. So I usually just took the next day off and went, went and fucked about like any young 21 year old guy would do. Okay, so we had this tradition uh, where, you know, some transgressions would take place and you would just basically say, you know, I'm going to walk down there to the Coke machine and I'm going to get a Coke. Now, if I come back here and there's $2 in the drone fund, I didn't see anything. So basically, uh, you could say it's kind of an extortion kind of thing, you know, even though everyone knows, unless it's egregiously fucked up. You're not going to write any fucked up shit in the log because the first sergeant would come in there and be like, what, what happened here? What's going on? And ask a bazillion questions. And if any craziness was going on, then he would go talk to people. And people would get fucked up, have to do road marches and what have you. And then everyone's pissed at you for, you know, fucking them. Okay, granted, there are, there are some instances where you have to put shit in the log, you know, like if somebody gets hurt or... You know, there's a fight or, you know, there's a lot of witnesses to some bad shit. You got to put it in there or uh, it could go south. And there was a few times where, you know, I really should have put shit in the log and I didn't. And I basically, you know, did the Hail Mary, hope I don't get fucked over thing. And I got, I got away with it. Okay. And probably saved, you know, a lot of other Rangers from getting fucked up and maybe a few of their careers. Now, as the CQ or the CQ runner... You basically walk through the barracks once an hour and then walk around the building, check out the parking lot, you know, make sure that since the chow hall was right behind our building, we'd make sure all of the chow hall um, doors were locked and secured. And uh, then you just write it in the log, you know, did rounds, did rounds, did rounds. Okay, so the best days to get CQ were a Friday and a Saturday night because if you played your cards right, you can make a decent amount of money in, you know, in 1988, 89, and 90 money, you know. And I was not the best at this, but I would say I was in the top three or four. Um, some guys were incredibly ruthless at this practice. 
uh, I wasn't as bad. Uh, for instance, you know, it's, I don't know, it's probably 10 o'clock at night. I just did a walkthrough of, uh, you know, the three floors to the back of me because it was a, the building looked like a big H. It was three stories high, and then there was a big hallway that ran the length of it, and that too was also three stories high. You know, and, and I would quickly just walk up and down, and like, I would check it, to just walk through, make sure there wasn't any super turbo craziness going on, or if there was any like craziness going on, people shut their fucking doors, because the less fucking witnesses you have to fucked up shit, the better off you are. So I'm walking around the barracks on the outside, and I remember I'm walking along that strip of grass that's between the barracks and the parking lot, and I round the corner and I take maybe 10 or 15 steps and I hear a rope. Okay, now, in the corner of my eye, I saw that they had a woman on a rope and they were hauling her up to the third floor. So she was somewhere around the second floor. Now, from what I could see, this particular woman was not particularly particularly gravity friendly, if you know what I mean. She was a little bit thick, not huge, you know, but not super thinny, skinny either, not a thinny. She, you know, she had a little bit of meat on her bones. So I didn't, you know, and I knew if I, you know, said something or, you know, made a fuss that the fuckers up there would drop her and she would fall two stories down and get all fucked up. You know, and then if I tried to fucking, you know, hammer them, they're like, well, she wasn't in the barracks. I don't know what happened. I'm like, okay, cool. So I keep my cool. I finish the rounds. So I figure, you know, I'm going to walk up there. I'll be up there in like five or six minutes. So I come in the building, you know, take out the key ring, you know, for the, for the, um, the whole barracks. So I go outside again and I count the windows to make sure I get the right room. I go up to the third floor, go to the end of the hallway and count the, the doors back. It was like the third door from the end and I put the lock in there and I opened it up. And lo and behold, there are three women in there. Cause there's no women in the barracks back then period. I mean, it's, you, you can't do it. There's three guys, three chicks. There's some nefarious shit going on. Uh, you, you know what was going on. There, there was just a boatload of shagging going on. That's what's going on. So I turn on the light and everyone's, and it was just like, you know, like the, mu the music stopped and everyone's like, looked at me like, what the fuck? And I'm like, all right, what the fuck is going on here, Rangers? Are you that goddamn cheap that you can't throw five bucks in the drone fund and I look the other way for like two or three fucking hours while you have your little fucking whatever you're gonna do up here? Is that how we're running things now? You know, you, you'd rather like haul a chick out of fuck, I'm like, all you three, get the fuck out of the room. I take them all, and, you know, they put on like some shorts. Take him outside, and I smoke him for like 10 fucking minutes. And I tell him, I said, this is what's going to go down. I'm going to be at the desk for another 10 fucking minutes. I got uh, 20 to midnight. From 11.50 to midnight, I'm going to be checking the other side of the barracks. Now, if I come back here to the drone fund, and there's $5 in the cup, I will not check the left side of the building for two hours. And that was it. I just said, fucking, you know, you're gone. Do what you gotta do. Make your decision. Went down, did my deal, came back, $5 in the drone fund. I didn't check the barracks. What happened, happened. Because let's face it, men will be men, chicks will be chicks. Trying to keep them apart from doing an upgrade does, doesn't do anybody any good because they'll figure out some dangerous shit and it's going to happen anyway. <laughs> Another one, okay. This is very similar. Now this took place on the same floor, but instead of three rooms to the end, it was five. And it was about two weeks, no, not two weeks later. It was about six to eight weeks later. Uh, this is a Saturday night. And I'm down there, you know, it's 11 o'clock, maybe 10. And I'm just, you know, not doing nothing, reading a book, because, you know, we didn't have laptops, there's none of that, uh, you know, phones, or none of that bullshit, none of that shit existed. In fact, I think the CQ phone had a fucking dial, as well as the rotary fucking phones. So I hear a hair dryer, the stairwell, coming down from the stairwell. Now, this is back in the day when the Rangers all had high and tights. So basically, the side of your fucking head is buzzed down as low as it goes, and you have maybe a half an inch on top of your head, 
period. And it's, and it's like a modified mohawk, but it doesn't go all the way down the back of your head. It's just on the top. So I'm sitting there like, what vain motherfucker needs to use a fucking hairdryer when everyone in this building has a goddamn high tight? So I reach in the drawer, pull out the fucking ring of keys. I go walking up there because I just want to see who this vain motherfucker is that's using a fucking hair dryer on hair that's not even a half an inch long. Pull out the key, open the door, and there is this fucking woman standing there, not a lick of fucking clothes on her. Platinum blonde, hair down to about her mid back. I mean, she's got a serious eight and a half body and about a nine face. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Green eyes, light green eyes. And I open the door and I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> So I'm like, what the fuck? And, and, the one, and the one ranger, you know, this wasn't like anything. I mean, obviously some crazy shit was going on, but I don't know how the whole floor was in on this because she was actually coming over, sneaking in there every once in a while, using the shower. And then, you know, nobody would say anything. So I'm like, I, you know, I had to, you know, look at her for a good minute and a half. It, it, it was, I looked at her long enough to become semi-awkward. Okay, how could you not look at something like that? I mean, she was maybe 20 years old. I mean, just, she was fucking, it was there, man. It was, it was there. That, that dude fucking, uh, that was a good one. So, you know, I'm like, hey, come, come here, motherfucker. You know, I pull him out of his room. I bring him back down to the desk. And I'm like, okay, Ranger, what the fuck's going on? And he gives me the fucking, you know, soft shoe fucking story, the wah wah crybaby story. And in my mind, I can see him throwing the sand on the floor and doing the soft shoe to try to fucking sell me some bullshit. And I'm like, Ranger, this is how it works. All right. You got a woman in the fucking barracks. I don't care if she's your girlfriend, your fiance, your wife. I, I don't fucking care. If she's your wife, you need to move the fuck out of the barracks. So that's not the case. All right. So this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go get a Coca-Cola, and I'm going to check the other fucking side of the fucking barracks. When I come back, it'll be $2 in the drone fund, and this shit never happened. And whenever you feel like you got a sneaker in or do whatever you got, and I'm sitting at this desk, it's just a fucking dollar, bro. A dollar. Just a dollar in the drone fund. I looked the other way, and it never fucking happened. You know, come on. What do you got to be afraid of, dude? I'm pop. It's all good. He's like, bro, for that, you know, yeah. it is what it is. And she went away. I watched her leave and I was just like, oh my God, that woman is so fucking beautiful. Why can't I ever be that lucky and pull some good ass like that? Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so it is what it is. And uh, every now and again, you know, you get like uh, three and four day weekends on federal holidays. So... Like if you have CQ on a Wednesday night and you have a Thursday and Friday off attached to a weekend, that Wednesday night becomes like a Friday because those dudes, they fucking go nuts for four fucking days. And sometimes four days and a little bit because they're all like 19, 20, 21. And you can drink, you know, a liter of Jack Daniels every night and then get up at five in the morning and run five miles and not, not have a headache or a hangover. Try to do that shit at 40 some odd years old and you're going to wake up um, probably in a coma and run yourself into dialysis. I'm just saying, so don't do that. And if there's anybody out there that is that age and doing that, comments below because you're a fucking stud. Because I lost my ability to do that roughly around 26. So it, it, it is what it is. Okay, so I got the naked girl in the barracks, woman on a rope. All right. So I'm on CQ and it's a Wednesday, Wednesday night four-day weekend i get the usual speech from the commander on his way out you know hey, all right bob anything crazy goes on you just fucking call me we'll fucking handle it you know try to keep it in the house don't let fucking go nuts he leaves first sergeant comes in and he was f from guam and he had this fucked up accent and he'd be like ranger any craziness you go psychological on them and stall them and call me um like ro roger that i'm not gonna say the first sergeant's name if you knew who it was by by how I, you know, I did my imitation of him, which probably isn't that good, comments below, because that motherfucker was hilarious. Wasn't a good first sergeant. He's a good guy, but, uh, you know, <laughs> he was fucking hilarious. So, you know, I'm there at the, at the fucking desk. It's about 8 o'clock at night, 
and sure as shit, the door opens and Ranger walks in with a case of beer. I'm like, all right, Ranger, all right. Um, you decided to drink in the barracks. That's so responsible of you. Aren't you 19? And I get that, that, that uh, I, I tell you what I'm gonna do. Since you're being so responsible, I'm gonna go down and get a snicker bar. I come back, there's a dollar in the drone fund and you clean up your fucking mess. That's never fucking happened. <laughs> That night, I made about 60 fucking bucks. You know? It is what it is. You want to say it's mean? You want to say I'm being a fuck? I was a, being an asshole? Uh, yes, I was, and I wasn't. I think I was pretty lenient. You know? And I'll get onto some of these stories down the road. You know, where I saved a couple guys' asses from getting DWIs. Uh, let's see, I remember I uh, kept a guy, one ranger from beating his wife. I uh, had to go to there and fucking uh, tool him up a little bit because uh, the MPs were really good about that. They would call you before they would go to a domestic and say, hey, we're going to be there in 15 minutes if you get there in 10 and defuse the whole situation. It never fucking happened. Back in the day, the MPs used to be cool like that. Now they're just a bunch of dicks because I think they're civilian cops there at Fort Lewis and they don't give a fuck about anybody in this they just care about their numbers and, you know, shit like that. F fuck the Joe and the pressure he's been under, you know, fuck that guy. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. Anyway, uh, I think we're coming right up on like 15, 16 minutes. It's kind of a short night. Ah, one more, what the fuck. All right, you're going to love this one. So this particular time, I was on CQ. And uh, it was during, during the week, so it was a boring fucking thing. I think it was a Tuesday. Uh, it was about seven o'clock in the afternoon, no, seven in the evening, sorry. And uh, some guy comes down, and he's coming down from the, you know, I think it's the same side where the, I found the fucking, you know, the naked chick and the fucking three fucking barracks whores or whatever. And one ranger comes down, he's like, oh, no, sorry, Pop. I just thought you should know that we got a ranger setting up a 22 caliber range down the main hallway. And uh, he's shooting, you know, 20, a 22, you know, CB caps and stuff like that. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here, Ranger. Nobody's fucking, get the, no way. Come on. You guys are fucking with me. And, you know, and, I, and I, I, I fucking, I, I didn't take him at his word. So he goes out to do his deal. I think he was getting his car or whatever and going out on the town. So I'm doing, I'm reading a book, doing my deal. And I don't know, I fucking hear this. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I hear it again. You know, it wasn't quite a, a crack of a 22. It, it was like a muffled cap gun. I put the book down and I walk up there and sure as shit, again, on the third fucking floor, this dude had set up, this one ranger had set up like this, this steel fucking trap and it, he had it marked off at 25 meters and him and six other rangers were practicing Rifle marksmanship with a 22 caliber rifle shooting CB caps. <laughs> so I walk up there, I catch them all right-handed. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Shooting a goddamn gun in the barracks? Are you out of your goddamn mind? I, I fucking, I read them the riot act. I fucking clear the rifle, unload the fucking thing. I fucking smoked this shit out of them. And I had them holding duffel bags over their fucking head, doing the iron chair, you know, 20 minutes with the jumping jacks with, I mean, it was just fucking, I smoked, I smoked the dog shit out of them. And then, you know, I said, hey man, this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna call the armor. He's gonna secure this weapon in my locker, which I have with all of my other weapons in the arms room. Tomorrow morning, we'll open the arms room, you can have it back, and you'll put it in your fucking car, or you'll make arrangements for either stay in the arms room, or go the fuck away. And I want you to pick up all of this goddamn brass, right now, and I don't want you to throw it away in the barracks, you're gonna hand walk that shit to the fucking PX, and throw it in their fucking trash cans, cause it's not coming back here. All right, and the rest of you motherfuckers are gonna strip this floor down to nothing, and then you're gonna mop the floor, and then you're gonna re-fucking wax it and buff it to a nice fucking IG inspection shine. 
or I'm going to write this shit in the log that I found all seven of you motherfuckers firing a weapon into fucking bears. Oh, and this fucking trap you have going on here, I don't care what we do with it, but this fucking, this fucking thing has got to go away. It's not staying in the barracks, because I'm not burning for this, and neither are any of you motherfuckers, so I'm helping you from being dumbasses. Now make it fucking happen. I will be back in 15 fucking minutes, and I want to see this floor fucking stripped by then. Get to it. And that was it. They were fucking... It took them like two hours to unfuck the floor and get it all squared away. And that's the way it went. <laughs> all right, man, that's it. That's all I got for today. I hope you liked it. And I'll talk to you later.